Hi Soul Family, it's Jenna Pinkstone, the Southern Oracle, signing on and syncing up with Patron Steve today for an Oracle Wisdom Reading. I am going to connect my auric field with that of Steve's, which I've been doing for the past hmm, about a week now, I would say. The way in which these messages come to me are a little different. They're not only in the moment. It kind of seeps into me from the intentions that I set for extended periods of time. And that's really why I prefer to connect with other soul signatures in this way through Patreon. Because there is this understood, um, I guess you could say a cohesion of interests with one another and not so much in I just want a reading to answer this question I it, there, there there's this set intention that each party myself and the patron who seeks to sync up with me and my own individual perspective in this that the intention set is to gain wisdom about one another's lives and to see the intersect and the merging of the two soul signatures in which they create this Venn diagram where there's an overlap, you see? There's always an overlap between each and every one of us in this world. And it is through this overlap, through this cohesion and unity that I seek to discover the wisdom within myself and the wisdom of the oneness that intersects us all. So I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to summon back some images that have been permeating, some images that have been kind of marinating into my own auric field over the past several days that I have been sinking with Steve. What it is that I have been seeing is a, that of an insulated earth. An insulated earth almost in as much that when we were children and we learned about the ozone layer and how the ozone layer was this invisible barrier that kept the sun from burning us all alive and it kept our atmosphere within this area by which we could enjoy it and actually breathe the oxygen that that is in our air okay and we learned as children that certain things were you know depleting the ozone layer and you know putting us in at vulnerable risk of the harmful sun's rays and i'm guided to share that even the word harmful the word harmful connotes a duality because it does not share the entire picture. It does not share the entire truth. Any person, entity, corporation, agency that claims that they have the entire truth on a subject is deluding you. That if... If you see something in a different way than that of a different person or that of a different stance, that of a political view, if you see something in a different way and you are not able to see that someone else can see the same thing from an opposite reflection of you, then there is a very valuable part of this experience by which we are living as incarnations of spirit, there's a very valuable part that's missing. Okay? <sighs> Going back to this metaphor, returning to the metaphor of the ozone layer, layer this, um, this encapsulating buffer it, and it's it's depicted as clouds, actually. Even the O, oh, the ozone layer is invisible. It's depicted as clouds so that I can behold it, I feel. 
Yes, very well. The, the clouds keep going visible and then invisible, visible uh, and then invisible, as if to say, we're here, but you can't see us, but we're going to show you that we're here so that you're going to acknowledge that for this time of this being shared. Okay? Because the sun, the sun is the offensive feature. The sun is that which penetrates these these spots of vulnerability in through this encapsulation in through this insulated earth and from its penetration into the atmosphere all havoc can wreak loose but it is that very sun it is the sa the exact same sun that without the sun, none of us would be here. The sun represents in and of itself this physical, <laughs> this physical manifestation of spirit and oneness and an emanating energy source that brings life not just to this earth but to every planetary body in our galaxy okay it brings energy energy comes forth and penetrates the auric field of that of the planetary bodies which in and of themselves are also physical manifestations on a higher scalar plane, not higher to connote value or this is better than this. It's simply to validate a spectrum of scalar proportions. The earth is but one planetary body in a vast galaxy, in an even more expansive universe, one planetary body, one little rock floating in space. Depending on how you look at it, it can be viewed as insignificant or um, just even unmemorable like it, it's I'm sure there's you know millions others like it even just because we haven't found it that does not that does not make that the truth of all ages but just as this earth is a planetary body a single individualized manifestation of life so too are we in a scalar way connected to this earth which is all that gives us the life that we have that receives the energy from source and unity the Sun but when made vulnerable and openings and exposures of its encapsulation, this invisible blanket, so to speak, that which helps it to thrive, that which gives it life, that which gives it purpose, to so many others in a scalar way smaller than it, us. That which gives it life becomes that which scalds it. We are all little earths. We are all little earths floating around the central sun the energy giving source of creation. We are 
all little universes by which the cells, the individual cells of our body, seemingly minuscule, insignificant, or in some way, there's so many that they, they become less interesting to us, less valuable, but each one of those little cells is another universe in and of itself in a scalar way to us, to the earth, by which the sun warms or singes us all. shifting scenery and a shift in energy in what is there, what is there to share. I'm not sure if this is a past life or if this is a manifestation of a representation of the energies expressed in Steve's auric field, but I see a man that has been shot with an arrow right in the middle of his back, but just missing his heart by an inch or so. He has retreated from a battle by which he was made very bloody and, and very wounded. Um, he got away. <laughs> he retreated and he, he got away with his life. But he is on this open terrain where there is no one, no one and nothing. And he is so very wounded, but he does have a horse and he is able to get himself up on the horse, but not before trying to remove this arrow this arrow that hurts, this arrow that has pierced him. And the wound is so throbbing, it just won't stop. He can't even reach the arrow. It's in the middle of his back and it's through this armor that is just, he's been shot in the back and he cannot reach that which afflicts him. And it's almost like that is the more frustrating, like, experience to him, that he cannot fix it. He can't do anything. It's more, more offensive than the hurt, than the, the pain that is emanating from this central point between his ribs into his chest. So he must carry this afflicting object with him to the next destination of his life. He must carry it with him. With every trod of the horse's hooves as they hit the dirt and send a rippling vibration up into his body, he must feel palpably this arrow. He must carry that which afflicts him to the next place where he wants to leave all of this that he has encountered behind. But this, this arrow accompanies him. And his mouth grows sour at the, the idea of that. I get the impression this was not a war he ever wanted to fight. I get the impression that his hand, he felt in the moment that his hand was forced, even though we all have a choice, and he could have walked away prior to this bloody sequence of events. It is important for us to carry that which pains us 
that which pains us along the way, for even as he reaches this next town and he is able to seek the help that he very much needs and they are able to remove this arrow, he will always carry this arrow in a place most tender within him. It will always be there and he was never in, he was never meant to leave it behind. There is something to the stationary position of the arrow and how by way of, as soon as it entered him, as soon as it it afflicted his body and his mind with the pain and the presence that it bestowed upon his life. As soon as that occurred, that, that, that is it. It will never leave. It is... There is no way... There, there will always be the energy of the arrow in his heart. There is no running from it. There is no, there is no escaping the arrow. He was always the target. I feel resolved in the wake of this oracle wisdom reading. I feel at peace in knowing that that which afflicts and pains us so, that which we are, we are burdened with, is a gift. It is a gift. And, and without the gift of that pain, we would never know our own heart. We would not be given that opportunity. And that is why we are here, soul family, for the opportunity to know our own heart. I'm infinitely grateful for the opportunity to sink our auric fields, Steve. It has been my pleasure and it has also been my illumination of discovering the wisdom that our individual soul signatures when coming together have to offer this world. If this is an experience that you are interested in exploring with me, Jenna Pinkstone, the Southern Oracle. Please reach out and subscribe to future offerings and connect with me on Patreon for these kinds of Oracle offerings. I can also be connected with on my website, southernoracleeye.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. And I thank you for tuning in and syncing up with us today. This is Jenna Pinkstone, the Southern Oracle, signing off.